So there's a few buildings that I built over the last two years uh, called Castles. It's an off-grid building, it's an off-grid home, which is basically powered by wind, solar, and uh, annual heat storage. And the same, uh, that blue building, that's my house. That's uh, powered basically by solar thermal. Still missing my photovoltaic. But other than that, there's no fossil fuels in this building, basically. <coughs> completely heated by the sun. There's no backup, there's no fossil fuels, and uh, it's functioning really well. So what is a zero energy building? Uh, it's really simple. We are consuming energy, we're producing energy uh, by renewable means, and the year end annually, we're saying, okay, we produced enough or we didn't. So it reaches zero energy or it doesn't. That's basically the two the two questions. So it's a very simple uh, equation. The problem with it is really how do we get there? And how do we make sure that we don't just put up all of these renewable energies to get this building to the zero energy line? Just like we're doing right now. You know, these, these big buildings, they function because we have big heaters in them with big fuel tanks. Function really well. Now we can do the same thing on a renewable bu building where we say, okay, this is going to be zero energy. And we already see this on a lot of new buildings. A lot of renewable energies is put onto a building to get to the zero energy level. Nobody owns the sun. Once you put this up, there's nothing to maintain. There's nothing to charge. It's always there. If the sun doesn't shine anymore, we have other problems. So welcome to the second solar age. This is really, I think, where we're heading. We just don't know it yet. Why is it the so second solar age? Well, we have this little blip in time. You know, this is right now where we are. Maybe a few years back, you know, it's not too long ago. We didn't even know what a boiler is. You know, we were still walking around. But if you're looking at time, not just from our little perspective, but in the big scope of things, we had this little blip of time where we were thought everything is just about oil and fossil. But it isn't really, and we're heading the other way. Pretty soon, you know, we're going to be short uh, on oil. It's not, I think, you know, the key problem is not going to be we're going to run out. It's going to be so expensive to extract that it's just going to be unfeasible, and we're going to have to come up with other solutions. Are we going to have a choice? Not really. 